This is a review for the Dunu uh, Titan 6. This is a 12.6 millimeter beryllium coated driver. Um, I, I got this with the belief that it was going to have good bass and it does in fact have that. First track that I played is the first one on my playlist which is Tupac. This is where some stuff end up dying because it just it doesn't sound good and when I start to EQ or play with it, it it doesn't sound any better. So this did not suffer that problem. Bass is stout and potent um, as I imagined it would be. I also switched to Doobie Brothers because it's got a four string bass guitar very close right at the intro of the song. It sounds very nice. The, the, the sound sounds natural. Um, the way that the bass is tuned and the way the beryllium performs is very appealing. The mids don't seem to be mm, that far back when I play a song that I usually check mids with, which is No More No More by Aerosmith. The piano does not sound unnaturally... Remember, piano, like I said, 20 to 20. You can't hear 20 to 20. But the middle of the piano keys, if those are back, because the frequency response is dipped right there, scoop, you're going to notice it because the piano is barely audible except for the lower keys and the higher keys and everything else in the middle is very very hard to catch on these that's not the case so mids mids would not be an issue with this the issue and I'll get to it quickly just so you can kinda of get it is the the hi-hat strike just before Steve Winwood comes in it's 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 a proper crash but it's slightly abrupt in its decay it sounds not natural it sounds good but it, it my OCD brain knows that it sounds better like there are other items that I would take the TFC number three over this though I think that this probably has more potent bass so if you're somebody that really likes bass wants something that has a really easy fit can change and go to custom cables don't like hitting and stuff over your ears uh, and if this is around 150 or below, I would I would say this would probably be a good set for you. You're not really losing anything unless you start to OCD on, the, like a, a hi hat strike, at a certain point in time that you might not really pay attention to. But I look for it in particular. It's not one of the better playbacks of that I've heard. It's not a splash though. You know what I mean? That teeny metallic splash just kills my vibe that's not this is actually giving me the proper crash it just sounds like it's slightly cut a little bit there vocals Jim Croach um, operator Th this actually this is why I'm a fan of beryllium because the the bass to mid transition regardless of what a graph shows is always seems very natural if, you, if you've not heard Beryllium before, I suggest you get a set and listen to it, especially if you're someone that likes uh, not rolled low frequency. Like you, you don't want um, you don't want to be lacking in sub bass. That, that would not be the case with this. You would be fine. And mids are not uh, relative to bass, notably recessed. They graph slightly recessed, but that's not something that I'm picking up. The only oddity that I'm picking up would not be in a vocal track like this where he's playing a guitar and a male voice. It sounds fine. It sounds very nice, actually. Playing it off of a N8 with the tube on, it's already got elevated bass. It's a very, very musical, warm playback. It's very, very nice. Um, again, the only time where I'm running into something is once I heard that, that hi-hat decay sound slightly accelerated, I was looking for it every time I listened to something that had a hi-hat strike. So... You know, this actually is not what I was looking for. Sweet leaf. I did a review of an item recently that's called the the P1, um, and it's done by uh, Tin Hi Fi. And one of the places where it really shined was right here because planar speed um, is exceptional. Beryllium speed is good too because that's what makes the recovery from bass to mid seem to be seamless But this track doesn't sound as good on this set as it does on the those p1s because a planar is It's faster the the, the sense of distortion that comes with sweet leaf black Sabbath is played back on a planar in a way that's Seems natural though planars are not what you listen to when you go to a concert or you give floor speakers at your house unless you're super rich I, I'm pretty sure 
but it sounds better on a planar. In this, it sounds um, distortion laden, but no more so than other dynamic drivers. It just I was noting the difference between this and the planar, and, and this song comes really, really clear. Uh, Marshall Tucker Band, can't you see? This is kind of a fun '70s song. Um, four member plus group i think they've sometimes got multiple guitarists and uh, uh, other people joining the band it's like the band sounds very fun on this this is genuinely a fun set F fun tuned fun sounding it seems typical of duno i don't remember listening to duno except maybe one of them that sounded maybe kind of thin very wide stage but very thin which is kind of they kind of come together this is not the case this is a more intimate uh, organic musical playback that you, you will only find lacking maybe if you listen to something like orchestra that's got a lot of instruments in the high register and you think that that might be a little bit set back compared to other playbacks that you find to be appealing not a, you don't need to be a trouble head but I think that you might find these to be slightly uh, down well, on a track like this we've got male singers uh, guitars bass the only time i'm picking this out because my brain is making me is um, hi-hat strikes cymbals by drummers that i'm not really picking it up on the guitar solos doesn't sound like anything's going a little bit fast or something's not there it is it's just the hi-hat and you're thinking man why are you going to keep talking about that because it's it's so hard to do if, if this did that well, this would be a set that I would put a green check next to, like, right away. It's not expensive. It fits super easy. It's beryllium coated. It's got a removable cable. You can put your pimp cable on it. it again, the fit is so easy. Um, the bass is nice. It's very musical. The only reason that I wouldn't put a green check next to this is because of that. Where I hear the hi-hats and also that... Now, I can't say the Black Sabbath track because that's pretty much Dynamic Drivers as a whole. That None of them are really playing Sweet Leaf that great for in-ears just not really hearing it maybe the ex 1000s though i don't grab black sabbath when i'm using the ex 1000s that much it's not like a natural give me that type of thing the planars though yes black sabbath with planars that's a definite go um violent femmes again acoustic guitar and bass guitar in the intro uh and then followed by male vocals sounds very very nice and there really is no hi-hats that I'm thinking about in this track, so it's it's I enjoy it a lot because I'm not looking for the weak point. So bass is elevated. It sounds good. It sounds reasonably fast for a dynamic driver. That comes down to the beryllium coating. The mids sound uh, actually good. The piano doesn't sound back on Aerosmith. It doesn't sound uh, like the vocals on Jim Croce or any of the male singers on the stuff that I listen to. Steven Tyler in the No More No More, he can sometimes sound slightly distant behind the band. No problems like that whatsoever. I got stuck on the Blind Faith uh, hi-hat strike and then started to follow other points and music that I listened to where that could be an issue and it turned out that I was catching it right. If you're a deadhead, you might like these. There's not a lot of it's not a lot of prominent hi-hat striking going on. This is really vocal-centric, acoustic guitars, uh, multiple singers. Sounds very nice on this. I guess it would depend on your genre. If you're into classical music or something that has a lot of upper-end stuff, I would say probably no. If you're somebody that listens to um, a lot of low-frequency stuff that's semi-complicated and kind of fast, mm, aside from planars, this would probably be the next best step. The reason I would wreck the tin or the TFC number three over this would be its overall presentation. It's got better micro detail and it's got a more appealing signature overall. That doesn't seem to be uh, an abnormal peak in the treble and there doesn't seem to be a, a accelerated roll off. So that would seem to be the better tuning and I think that price wise they're about the same or the number three plastic might be slightly cheaper than this. So I would continue to wreck that one. Uh, this is nice. If you're a beryllium person like I kind of am uh, you might want to try this set out because that means that you like bass and you like your mids and you don't like one to bother the other. And if you want to EQ something up 3 to 6 dB, you don't want to totally give up on the mids. This might be a set that you might want to consider. And that's it.
uh, soundstage. Because of that peak and its position of it, remember that's a kind of a psychoacoustic illusion. All IEMs that are stuck into your ear, they're basically hearing protection and blocking out most everything from the outside world. So anything that gives you a sense of space is usually via tuning in the treble. This doesn't sound particularly wide. Um, it sounds doesn't sound narrow either. It's not something that I really was paying attention to. And when I'm not paying attention to something, that means that it's a good thing. When I'm paying attention to something like the cymbal strikes, that means it's a problem. And then I start to drill down with my brain. Only weak point. So stage would be normal. Bass would be very good. Uh, mids would be decent. It would be the treble that would be the part that would keep this from being really good. Um, it, in its in its own, it's it's a good set of IMs. And again, if you're into Berlin, you might want to give it a try. If you got the number three, pass. You, you won't need this. And we are out.